Welcome to this presentation by the Town of Canandaigua Environmental Conservation Board. My name is Edith Davey, and we are looking at invasive species that threaten the town of Canandaigua, New York. We are not alone in invasive species in New York. All of these things, mile a minute vine, mute swans, didymo, a rock snot, all kinds of things have invaded New York or are threatening us. So we need to be aware of what is sharing our environment and what kinds of things may be causing damage. Alien invasive species are non-native. They contribute to many problems, habitat loss, loss of native wildlife, loss of recreational opportunities, they damage our properties, and they have common characteristics. In general, they grow quickly, reproduce quickly, they tolerate a wide variety of environmental conditions, they have very few natural predators. Many of them have alleliopathic properties, meaning they put out root poisons that keep other plants from growing. They may change the soil. They came here because of us. They came on pallet boxes. They came on our uh, rope propellers. They came when we bought aquarium plants or when we wanted to improve our backyards. And we didn't think too carefully about possible consequences. Places that alien invasive species love include anything where soil is exposed. So road ditches are a prime source of habitat for alien invasive species. And we are also the vectors. We spread these things on blades, on buckets, on all kinds of machinery, but on our clothing, tires, shoes. So let's start with the worst one first. This little plant is going to grow into giant hogweed which will reach anywhere from 10 to 15 feet high sometimes. It has prolific seeding properties, 20,000 seeds per flower head, and it grows very well along streams in particular. Birds can spread seeds and are impervious to the effects of it, but they're very damaging to humans and to other animals because the stems are covered with sharp spiny hairs that transmit a toxin in the sap. And if you contact skin with it, it will develop into severe burning blisters that may persist for as long as five years in some cases. The sap is extremely dangerous. And it's not just people who can suffer from it. Our pets also have problems if there is exposed skin. So noses, paws, eyelids, and that sort of thing can get damaged. Do not try to dispose of giant hogweed yourself. If you find giant hogweed, call the DEC, there is their hotline number. They will come out in their moon suits and treat it. It is very likely to reappear the next year from seeds, so keep an eye on where the, the uh, infestation was. Japanese knotweed is becoming a real problem in road ditches and wetlands in Ontario County and all of Western New York. It's an upright shrub. It, blooms in the fall. It has almost no habitat uh, qualities. When the canes die, they shatter into really sharp fragments. Some of these infestations are you know, almost impossible to walk through, even for wildlife. The new canes emerge through the old ones and form dense, dense blankets. They are extremely difficult to eradicate. 
the roots can get as deep as 10 feet and removing it by excavation is very difficult because any piece of root or stem that is left can sprout again. This infestation is traveling up from a road ditch and going up the little stream. All plant parts, including the blooms and fruits, should be bagged and disposed of properly to prevent reestablishment. Don't try to compost it. Chemical application of herbicide it has to go into a cut stem, cut it a couple of inches above the ground, and apply glyphosate and water in the mix. And uh, keep going back to reapply because the seedlings will reappear. It's important to get the herbicide down the stem. In fact, small infestations are often taken care of just with one-on-one. -on -one. Foliar applications don't work quite so well. They have to be prepared by a surfactant to take off the leaf cuticle has to be done when the air temperature is suitably warm. A small infestation, such as in a garden or a lawn, can be removed if you're patient by putting black plastic over it and trying to trample it down. It is also edible in a very early stage, but you'd better be pretty hungry. One of the problems with knotweed is that it, it has a great deal of root pressure and it can sprout through asphalt or brick or even houses. And it's very easy to transport. So if you've been working in it, clean off your boots. You may preserve your property and possibly your marriage if you carry this home. It will take root and grow wherever the seeds are dropped and obviously can cause a great deal of property damage. Disturbed soil is a prime place for it. If you are digging in a ditch where there is uh, not weed present, it's going to follow that ditch uh, right up the road. You can also, any kind of disturbed soil, even a little bit in the garden can invite this stuff. Oriental bittersweet was brought in as an ornamental because it has very large berries and it is quite a large plant. The uh, mowing it is effective in early stages if you keep mowing it weekly. If you mow it once in a while, maybe once or twice in a season, it is going to stimulate it and it will grow even more. The damage that it causes is killing trees. It climbs up the trees. It's very heavy. So the trees topple in the wind. And it can be controlled by being pulled or dug out if it's just getting a start. The fruit should be bagged and landfilled again. Make sure you treat it with brush killer if you have a stump that's left. Please use the chemicals after the frost when the native plants are dormant and uh, bittersweet begins photosynthesizing very early in the spring. It will be the first one out. Multiflora rose is ubiquitous. The root seeds are, the roots are very um, deep. It can spread by layering, which means those canes will get long enough to bend over and touch the ground at which time the tips will sprout into another whole bush. It is very thorny. It is very common along roadsides. It has very little habitat value and it's quite difficult to get rid of. Again, the stumps have to be cut late in the growing season, July through September, during the, the dormant season to minimize damage to other plant species. Leather gloves, believe me. Wild parsnip is related to giant hogweed. It is becoming more common. 
It has a little different leaf. It's a little broader. The bloom is uh, yellower. It is uh, controlled by pulling small infestations. Mow it before the seeds set. Again, glyphosate, etc., for chemical controls. It will also create burns. So if you're pulling it or weeding it, long sleeves, long pants, high socks, anything to keep the juice off of it. Here's another related plant, a little fernier leaf, the same, a white blossom. And it is present in Ontario County and is becoming widespread across the whole country. You mow it before the seed, the plants go to seed, keep it mowed for a couple of years or spray it with glyphosate. Wash your hands after you touch it. Don't touch your mouth or your eyes if you have been touching any of the sap. It is related to the wildflower, Queen Anne's Lace. Queen Anne's Lace has a little black dot in the center of the bloom, which poison hemlock does not and the leaves of the poison hemlock are a bit fernier, so you can tell them apart. Black swallow wart is related to common milkweed. Therefore, monarch butterflies mistake it for milkweed and lay their eggs on the plant, but the caterpillars will be poisoned by toxins in the plant. You can spray herbicide on the vines after they've begun flowering and it will kill it. But since it grows as a vine on the ground, it's very difficult to get to the bottom layers of it. So you may have to repeat if you kill the top layer in order to get all of the, of the leaves underneath. The seed pods are pointy. It's pretty easy to tell what it is once it seeds. If you kill this stuff, plant something that will spread rapidly, that is native and cover up the uh, disturbed soil. Apply the chemicals after flowering's begun, so don't spray it too soon. Garlic mustard was bought, brought in uh, for food flavoring, as you might guess from the name. It kills mycorrhizal fungi that surround tree roots, which means that trees will not grow very well, particularly hardwoods where this stuff is present. It changes the acidity of the soil. Uh, native butterfly eggs die when they are hatched on this plant. You can pull small infestations. Second year plants are best removed when in full bloom. If you have a huge uh, area, herbicide works, but you may have seeds for a long time. Mile a Minute Vine is an annual plant. It has multicolored little seeds. It grows very ferociously during the year that it's there. It covers up trees. It can kill trees by cutting out sunlight and reducing photosynthesis. Ants and other birds, uh, mammals and birds will spread the seeds. Ants seem to take them down into the ground. They are looking at possible biological controls for this, but nothing has presented itself fully safely yet. You can hand pull it before the barbs get hard and sharp. You can compost it if there are no seeds around, but even little green seeds will sprout if um, the plant is pulled when the seeds are present. Frequent mowing will help, but make sure your mower is cleaned off and the blades are cleaned off or else you'll be spreading it. Systemic herbicides, glyphosate, and so on can be used for it. Japanese barberry is a thorny plant, a shrub. The stems can be cut, herbicide applied to the species, to the stumps. It hosts deer ticks, which is one reason we are concerned about the spread of it. 
it lacks any kind of habitat value. The seeds have no uh, food value for wildlife. A weed wrench can remove some of these. Burning bush was, of course, an ornamental. You can see it anywhere around cemeteries and around town. But it has spread into the woods, and it is covering up the understory and shading out other things that might grow. Autumn olive has been around for a long time. It tolerates all kinds of conditions. It interferes with the nitrogen cycle that native plants depend upon. And the dense thickets reduce all kinds of succession patterns, including hardwood regeneration. If you cut it without putting on stump killer or burn it, it will stimulate sprouting and more spreading. Buckthorn shades out everything. The fruits are quite laxative. It elevates the nitrogen content of the forest soils. It alters insect communities. It is very hard to control because it does have prolific seeding uh, qualities. Foliar herbicide is sometimes required. Trees can be cut and herbicide applied to the stump. Norway maple has spread around. It's a rather weak tree. It is not uh, as desirable a tree as sugar maples, and it has replaced many of them. It creates a very dense canopy, shades out wildflowers and other tree seedlings. Cutting when they are young, when necessary, applying herbicide to prevent re-sprouting is necessary. This one is becoming more of a problem. Tree of Heaven, or Alanthus trees, are short-lived, they grow quickly, they spread rapidly, it has very weak wood, so it falls over in high winds. It's quite tolerant of many environmental conditions. It will tolerate low light, poor soils. It carries an allelopathic root chemical that kills other plants around it. And it uh, spreads, it can grow out of sidewalks, it will grow through asphalt. It, the tree is cut, it responds by sprouting very quickly. Sprouts can grow 10 to 15 feet in a year. And the root suckers spread out from any tree and will grow practically anywhere. Cut it in early summer. Some herbicides work, some don't. One of the problems with Alianthus is that it is a preferred host for an invasive insect species, the spotted lanternfly, that decimates vineyards and apple orchards. Controlling Alanthus will help. It is a fairly complicated process of drilling holes in the trunk and injecting uh, herbicide. This bug likes Alanthus trees, so if you find that bug, take a look around for an Alanthus. So, for highway departments, it is important to provide staff training. People need to know what they're looking at. Road maintenance should include monitoring, identifying and monitoring and treating the alien species, minimizing ground disturbances, uh, making sure, for instance, that you have, if you're in an infested area, that there is one entrance and exit instead of machinery going in and out of various and numerous places. Avoid mowing weed infested, uh, moving weed infested fill. <laughs> Clean off your equipment. You have high powered water and air pressure available. Clean all the mud, the soil, the plant parts before you move into a weed free area. Revegetate. Put something else in so that the alien species do not catch hold first. 
make sure that if you're using soil and mulch to cover and disturb soils that it comes from non-weed infesting sources. And remember that you're a vector. Your boots, your pants, your clothing, your shirt, your hand tools, all of these can carry weed seeds and parts of roots. A few words of caution. Protective equipment and clothing should always be used when you're applying pesticides and herbicides. Only DEC certified pesticide technicians may apply some pesticides and herbicides. Always wear closed shoes, long sleeves, long pants, gloves, safety goggles, and a mask when you are applying chemicals because Pesticides and herbicides are made to kill cells. Sensitivities to chemicals vary greatly. Few people know theirs, and no one gets to choose whether they are sensitive or not. Your cells, your DNA, is more similar to other organisms than you might suppose. For instance, your DNA is 70% the same as that of an oak tree. So read and follow exactly the label directions. A couple of things while you're out and about. You will meet some vines, some of which will be uh, dangerous, even if they are native. Poison ivy, three leaves. It may be a vine, a shrub. It can be climbing, it can be covering the ground. Virginia creeper has five leaves and it's not toxic. If you cut a heavy vine of poison ivy, use a herbicide, a brush killer on the root, or it will spread all over the vine from the root. So what do we have in the town? A good few invasive species, everything from purple loosestrife to Japanese knotweed, gypsy moths, oak wilt, and many others that we have to be aware of. But remember that you need to know what you're looking at. This lady and her pup are both in danger and obviously don't have a clue. So if you have to call for help, here are the sources of help. DEC, the Soil and Water Conservation District, and Cooperative Extension can all guide you in the right direction and to the right controls for the alien invasive species that we do not want growing in the town of Canandaigua. Thank you.